That's why I got a limo out here, a mile long, filled with women waiting for me to go. Woo! Well, the president met today with leaders of the Democrats, Republicans, House and Senate. And one of the reasons he did that was this new book came out claiming that he had dementia, that he was mentally unstable. Well, he did a 45-minute-plus meeting with the media talking about DACA. He was in command of the agenda. He looked pretty uh, mentally stable to me, to the majority of the people in the room. Nobody questioned his mental capability. Not even the Democrats wanted to see if he could count to 10, or they, they didn't even bother to ask him, you know, what day of the month it was. So the idea that the president has dementia and is mentally unstable is pretty much nothing they bring up to his face. Uh, I think he pretty much proved that he's mentally stable, so that argument always was a joke. Now let's talk about DACA. What is DACA? There's estimated 800,000 people that came here after they were born. They call them DACA or Dreamers, but the issue with the Dreamers is a dreamer can be anything. They, they imply that, that they're teenagers, but most of them aren't. The vast majority of them are adults. They, we assume that they're all innocent virgins, but the truth of the matter is they could have came here when they were one week old. They could have came here when they were 18. They could have came here when they were 30. What we're talking about is 800,000 illegal immigrants. Some of them showed up when they were kids. Some of them um, not so much. The, the thing is, when you're undocumented, we really don't know what age you came to the United States because you're undocumented. I mean, think about it. You're undocumented. Well, what, what day did you illegally enter the country? How old were you? Do you have a birth certificate from another country? Um, these, this is paperwork that none of them have, and if they do, they're, they're not disclosing it. Um, are they first-generation illegal Mexicans? Are they first-generation illegal Asians? Are they first-generation illegal Middle Easterns? Um, where's their actual country of origin? If they started handing over birth certificates, um, they, they would be deported. So, A, they, they, they won't hand them over if they've got them. B, a lot of them don't have them. And if they did, they, they won't acknowledge it. So you don't even know where they're from. So we have 800,000 illegals in the country. And because we call them dreamers, they're, uh, they're, they're perfect people. Well, they're not perfect people. A lot of them... Not, not all of them by any means, but out of 800,000, uh, out of a group of 800,000, you're going to have some felons, you're going to have some gross misdemeanors, you're going to have some misdemeanors, and you're going to have, you know, majority are, besides the crime of being illegal, besides the crime of identity theft, which they have to commit to get an apartment, to title a car, to get a driver's license, to get a job. Remember, out of these 800,000 people, you're, you're looking at a lot of identity theft, um, What's your social security number? I don't have one. I, I'm illegal. Okay, so how did you get an apartment? How did you get a job? How did you get a mortgage? Uh, stolen identity, stolen identity, stolen identity. So the majority, the vast majority of these people are not only guilty of being illegal, they are also guilty of identity theft. It's the way they get through their every day. They don't have an ID that says illegal immigrant. They have an ID that says Sarah Connor. They have an ID that says John Doe. And they have a social security and a date of birth that they stole from an actual American to get that ID. So remember, the vast, vast majority of these people are not only guilty of being illegal immigrants, they're also guilty of some form of identity theft. That's how they got a credit card. That's how they got, you know, their driver's license, their their mortgage, their school, their student loan. They had to steal somebody's identity. You, you can't put down illegal immigrant on your credit card application. At least if you could do that, a lot of other Americans would do it. People with bad credit would claim to be an illegal immigrant and they'd just start credit over again. Why, why bother to spend the money on bankruptcy if you can claim illegal immigrant unknown country of origin? So that that's not realistic and you don't see that on loan applications or credit card or lease applications or job applications, school applications. So m most of these people, the vast majority of the 800,000 are committing some level of identity theft just to function day to day. But set aside all the crimes they committed. Some of them have committed serious crimes, violent felonies, drug running, rape, child molestation. Out of 800,000 anybody, 
Some of them are going to be felons. Some of them are going to have drug felonies. Some of them are going to have violent felonies. Some of them are going to have sexual-related felonies. And for anyone that says that they're all innocent, they're, if you take 800,000 random, random people in the United States, not all 800,000 of them are innocent. But back to what the president is trying to do today. The president has leverage. That is, he can legally deport all 800,000 if he wants. And he said that the problem has to be dealt with at a deadline. That deadline is quickly approaching. What the president wants is his big, beautiful wall. He also wants to change, uh, change my, chain migration, which means one person gets in, you can bring the whole family in. Then every family member you bring in can bring in more family, and, it, and it's a chain migration that never ends. Uh, we've had two terrorist attacks in New York City in 2017, both of them the result of chain migration uh, immigrants. So the president wants to end that. He wants to replace the American current uh, my immigration system with what's called merit immigration. Mexico has merit immigration. Mexico is not racist because they're Mexicans. The Mexicans can't be racist. Australia has merit-based uh, immigration. The, we know the Australians aren't racist because they're not Americans. Only Americans are racist. Um, but what does merit-based uh, immigration means? It means you have to have a skill we value. We want you to have a college degree, say computer science, say computer programming, say you're a physical doctor, you study X. You have merit. You have something, you bring something to the table here in the United States that we value. Um, whether it's your degree, and it's not a degree in anything. So political science, women's studies is not going to be the top of letting you in. Uh, you have a computer science degree. You have a degree in finance. You have a degree in something we value. We can also put a dollar price on immigration. Um, most other countries require that you not only pay a certain amount to immigrate to their country, but you have a certain amount of reserve. You you buy something, you buy land, you invest in the country. Um, now, and it, they also require that you have a job. So degree, money, and employment, those would be great things to have. So if you're going to migrate to the United States, you can't get on welfare for a certain period of time, if ever. You have to have a degree. Maybe you got the degree while you're in the United States and you want to stay, and you've got a job. Hey, you're a merit-based candidate. You came here, you did computer science, or you studied cancer, or you studied uh, Alzheimer's, or you studied something that we value. Once again, not uh, political science, not woman's studies, not, you know, the, the migration of spotted owls, but actual something that brings economic value to the United States, whether it's healthcare, whether it's finance, whether it's computer science, and you have a job, and you have some money to invest. The education, the job requirement, uh, if you're low on one or the other two, maybe you can buy your way in. Those two are fine. But education and a J-O-B, you're welcome in. Also, can't vote for a while. Can't get on welfare. No welfare for you. No illegal voting for you. Get on welfare, you're out. We catch you voting, you're out. Bye, gone, U.S. citizenship revoked. And keep the job. Now, I would give them a time frame to find another job because what happens a lot with the visa uh, employees in Silicon Valley and in high tech is this. You come in, they'll, they'll get you a job in the United States. They'll get you a green card, but they'll lowball you on your employment. They'll treat you basically like a slave. You're, you're, you're overworked and you're underpaid. And it drives down the wages for the average American because you have somebody from India or China that will come here and do 60 hours a week for 50% of what American would do 40 hours a week. And you'll work the holidays and you'll work and you'll, you'll eat shit to keep your job because if you lose your job, you're deported. So it's better to make $40,000 and $100,000 a year job in the United States than it is to go back to India, go back to Pakistan, go back to China. They have to be paid fair market. That means white wages, to be perfectly honest with you. So you don't drive down American wages too much. Um, but that's uh, merit-based uh, migration. That's what Trump wants, a wall, merit-based migration, and we have to find a way to tax Mexico to pay for the wall. Do those three things, the DACA people stay. You don't do those, th all three of those things, 
the DACA's start to go, and you start deporting the felons, uh, drug, violent, sexual, then you get down to the misdemeanors, gross misdemeanors. Somewhere around gross misdemeanors, the Democrats will begin to support uh, merit-based migration and the building of the wall along with the funding of the wall. These, those are my expectations. Remember at the moment, Trump holds most of the cards. The Democrats demand a clean DACA bill, which means the Republicans give up all the DACA leverage because we feel sorry for the 800,000 illegal immigrants that came here, broke our laws, and committed identity theft. <laughs> I say no. You, you, you've got leverage. You've got both sides have issues. You work them out in one bill. When that bill goes through, you end up with a wall, and you end up with merit-based migration, and the DACA kids, minus the felons, can stay. This is Tim with Tim's TV. That is an update on the president's meeting. That's where it's eventually going to fall out. But one of the reasons this was televised is to show, A, they're working on it. B, the president is mentally sound. He doesn't have Alzheimer's. Everything in Wolfie's book was basically a lie. If you like what you hear today or hate it, don't care, please subscribe. Tell your friends whether you love it, whether you hate it. Tell everyone you know about it. Timstv.com. <laughs>